So believe it or not, one of the most common questions I get asked from people who are new to electric cars is what do you do if you run out of charge on the road and you get stranded? And my answer has always been, you just call a tow truck, that's what you gotta do. Now, if you're familiar with electric cars, you know that you probably won't run out of range because most people charge at home, you're full every day, but it's not impossible for it to happen. And in those situations, you pretty much do always have to have a tow. Today, we're gonna be looking at an option other than towing. We have the Blue Eddy AC200. It's a 1.7 kilowatt hour battery. It can do 2000 watts continuous. Uh, so this can charge your Tesla up on the go. But is it really worth it? How much can it charge your Tesla? How long will it take? We're gonna find all that out right now. So thank you to Blue Eddy for sending out the AC200. They wanted me to test it out on my Model 3 and share with you guys what I thought about its ability to charge the car. It should be able to give you up to around 11 miles of range. Of course, that depends on a lot of environmental factors, how long you charge it, uh, the efficiency of the charge you're getting, all of that. So today I thought it would be fun to pretend we're stranded out in the wilderness. I'm out here with my Tesla. Uh, I ran out of juice, let's say, and I need a charge. So we're gonna look at, obviously I'm not out of juice, uh, but we're gonna look at how much range I have left and we're gonna plug this car in so the blue eddy has nema 515 and 520 outlets since it can do two kilowatts continuous you can use either of those outlets of course the nema 520 will charge you up a little bit faster and is a tiny bit more efficient but if we look at a nema 515 that's 15 amps times 120 volts it's about 1800 watts but continuous you can only use 80 percent so that's 1.4 kilowatts that you can get out of NEMA 515. Since this battery is 1.7 kilowatt hours, it would take us a little over an hour to fully deplete it. Maybe with inefficiencies, it would take us about an hour. But if we look at a NEMA 520, that's 20 amps times 120 volts, that's 2.4 kilowatts but times 0.8 we can only use 80 percent so that's 1.9 kilowatts so that's going to be right at the top end of this battery's ability so i picked up the nema 520 from tesla you can get this from their website for 35 dollars and if you are actually considering picking this battery up and doing any kind of charging with your car 100 percent you want to pick up that adapter it's probably good to have on hand anyway 35 bucks isn't a lot and it does almost double the charge rate with the nema 515 you get about four miles an hour with the nema 520 you should get seven miles an hour so it is actually quite a bit faster now the one caveat to this is when you plug your tesla in it checks for a ground and of course because this is a self-contained unit it is not grounded so you have two options you can get an adapter that allows you to ground it and you can actually ground the unit if you want or you can bond the ground to the neutral and i'm going to stop right there because i don't know all that much about it and i'm not going to really show you my technique for doing this because it's kind of goofy i consulted my buddy who's a master electrician uh, and when i sent him a picture of what i had rigged up he sent me back this picture uh, i'm not sure what that means <laughs> I think it means I might need a doctor soon or something, um, but it's been working fine so far, so I'm gonna do that. There is a little adapter you can buy on Amazon that will bond the neutral to ground for you. I can share a link to that in the description, but I have not used it. Uh, it does seem to have good reviews though, if that's something you wanna check out. So looking here, we have the NEMA 520 right here. You can see it has this sideways plug, and then we have the NEMA 515, just the normal wall outlet here. Um, so I will not be using this. We will use this. It should deplete that battery in an hour, actually a little bit less than an hour, because it will give us over 1.7 kilowatts in a single hour, and the battery is 1.7 kilowatt hours. All right, so here's the Blue Eddy. To turn it on, there's a power button right here. It has AC and DC charging, and those are off even when the unit is on. You have to turn those on individually as you want to use them. So I'm currently at 96%. I was doing a little testing with it. It comes with one big giant charging brick to charge it up. That'll take you several hours. You can get a second charging brick from them, and it has two charging inputs on the side, and if you want to use both of those at the same time, you can charge it up in three or four hours, something like that. So it's pretty quick. You can also charge it with solar, and Blue Eddy has solar panels that are really nice. These uh, portable, unfoldable solar panels. They're like fabric-y material. Even like the actual panel feels like some kind of rubbery fabric. It's kind of strange. I'll be doing another video uh, using those solar panels and maybe some other solar panels in the future with this battery. Okay, so getting a little closer in here, um, AC is right here. You can click that, it's a touch screen and we'll turn it on. So now all of these NEMA 515 or 520 outlets are active. You can see they all have the options you want here. There's six of them. It also has USB, USB, and then actually it has USB-C power draw up to 60 watts out of this one, which is really good. And then you have some other DC stuff over here, which I'm not all that familiar with. If you wanna know more about like the super technical specs of this, I will link to a video from Will Prouse. If you've seen him, he's really good with solar panels and batteries, and he goes really in depth on all the technical stats of this battery. All right, so we have our Tesla charger here. Our AC is on. Let's get plugged in. So we're plugged in, 
you cannot see the Tesla adapter, but if I go down here, so you can see it is green. That means it's working. Um, so my plan here is I want to get it plugged in, um, and then I want to act like, you know, I'm stuck on the side of the road. Um, I do have to turn this because it has vent fans on the side. I don't want that blocked by the seat. Um, so just like that is fine. The vent fans are now open. Um, and we're going to plug it in, and I'm going to actually bring the power cable through the window to act as if, you know, I'm on the side of the road. I want to keep the battery safe in the car. And we'll check it at a half hour to see how many miles we've gained because, you know, half hour is not a bad time to wait. You'd probably be waiting much longer for a tow truck than that. And even if it only gets you a few miles of range, it's enough probably to get you to a plug somewhere, right? At least if you can get to some kind of outlet at a building, you're, you're better off than if you have no charge sitting on the side of the road. And then we'll check it after an hour or after this battery is dead, whatever comes first, and we'll see how much range we get in that amount of time. So we're ready with the battery there. Come over to the car. We should be able to open it with the button. Okay, so that's good. Plug in and hopefully this will turn green. Okay, so we are plugged in. We did not start charging because I have it set to not start till 7 p.m. But I'll just click start charging here. That's just warning me, you know, that I'm charging before my uh, set time. And the Tesla automatically detected that we had a NEMA 520. So it's bringing us to 16 amps, which is 80%. And that should ramp up. And then you can hear the Blue Eddy in the back. That's the Blue Eddy. Uh, it knows a lot of power is coming out, so it's cooling itself off. Now, it did stop charging, and I did experience this before, but it should ramp back up. So there we go. We have 16 amps. We're getting 6 miles an hour, um, and now the Blue Eddy staying on. So we should be good here. Now, one thing to note, you can see I have my air conditioning off. And if you're ever in this situation for real, you want to make sure your air or your heat is not on, because that's going to pull probably more power than you can even put in from this battery or even a normal wall outlet, the car won't even charge if you have AC or heat on. So make sure those are off. Okay, so the car's charging with the battery. I set its timer for about 30 minutes and we'll check it then. Now, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I need to buy this battery just in case I get stranded, that, I don't think that's the case. Um, this thing is really cool if you can get some use out of it and then also have it in case of that situation. Like if you go camping a lot and you need to bring energy with you, you can bring it with you. You could plug in a solar panel to charge it back up. Um, so the thing is really cool. It is quite expensive though. Um, and it's on Indiegogo, which I'm not normally a fan of. Uh, but this is a known company and they have sold other products and they seem to have good reviews online with their other products. So if we look at the display on the Blue Eddy, uh, you can see, I, don't, I can't really see, 1872. So 1 1.8 kilowatts right now is going from this battery into our car. So that's a lot of power, you know, for a portable uh, battery here. Now, portable in the sense that, you know, you can bring it around. The thing is like 50 pounds, so you probably don't want to go hiking with it. Um, but you could take it, you know, to grandma's house or camping or anything like that many many minutes later so here we are for the 30 minute checkup let's check the blue eddy wow down to 23 percent already that was maybe 33 or 35 minutes something like that um so that's pretty insane let's hop in the car and we are at 180 miles of range so we had 176 i believe so so far we've gotten about four miles you can see here the blue eddy back there still cooling itself so let's let it finish up we'll use up this whole battery we'll see how long it takes to use the whole battery see how much range we get so even at this point you know it says we've added three miles which you're probably like oh my gosh three miles that's nothing but again if you're stranded and you have nothing and you add three miles you definitely can get to some kind of outlet somewhere there's more wall outlets than there are gas stations so if you can even get to a gas station or like somebody's house down the road i mean anything uh with three miles or even half that a mile and a half you should hopefully be able to find some kind of plug then you can plug in for a little more long-term charging. All right, I got a notification on my phone. It is 11.43. That charging is completed. You can see the Blue Eddy. Hopefully you can see. It's at 0%. It's done. It just finished. Turned off its cooling fans. Um, so let's take this out because we're done charging. So it did take about an hour, I think a little less than an hour, to dump uh, pretty much this full battery um, into the car. It doesn't feel warm or anything. Um, so... Approximately, approximately an hour, which, right, you'd be waiting longer than that for a tow truck, most likely. So hopping in the car, we're at 181 miles. We started uh, 176, I believe. So yeah, we gained about seven miles, according to my car. Of course, if you have like the standard range, you'd get a few more miles. If you're doing this with a Model S, you would get less miles. So not bad, not amazing. But again, this is a portable power solution, and there aren't many like this, especially for this size. So overall, the Blue Yeti is a really nice product. Um, would I buy this to have as backup storage in case I one day run out of power in my electric car? 
no, <laughs> I definitely would not buy it for that purpose. Um, but if you have uses for it, I think that it's a really nice unit. It has wireless charging for your phones. It has all kinds of stuff. I might, if, if you want a full like kind of review of just the product, let me know. I can make a video about that. Um, but it is a really nice battery. It is very cool that you can do this because a year ago, you know, I don't think this was really possible. There may be some batteries out there, but they weren't that powerful. They're not that big. And I will tell you, if you see this video and you're like, oh, I'm going to go on Amazon, just pick up something smaller, even if it adds a mile of range, that's, that's better than nothing. And I actually kind of agree with that sentiment. But you have to have, make sure you have enough continuous watts on that battery. And I was trying to look on Amazon. There is not much that I would consider affordable um, that can charge your car at all. It has to have enough watts to even charge the car at all. This battery has enough wattage to charge the car really fast, kind of deplete that whole battery really quickly. Um, but a lot of the smaller batteries you'll see on Amazon, even if say they're one kilowatt hour or something, they don't have the wattage to push an, any power to your Tesla at all. So overall, very nice product in a pinch. Technically, yes, it could work if you had this around and you could call somebody up and have them bring you the battery. They could give you a few miles and maybe you could make it home or make it to the next supercharger or wherever you're going. Um, to buy this specifically to charge your car in an emergency, I, I can't recommend it for that. But I do like the product. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, get subscribed. I look forward to talking to you down in the comments and you will see me next time. So Autopilot and I are happily driving along.